be doing a brief introduction to for people who have never used our an Arduino before. Um, and then we'll do hardware distribution. Uh, we'll be doing one microcontroller per team for now, just so that every team can get w at least one Arduino. And then if there are extras, like later tomorrow morning, then you can grab extras if you th really think they would help. So let's get started then. All right. So for people who don't know what an embedded device is, it's basically a low power device that does a very specialized task. And it's optimized for real time applications. So a real time application is basically like a car system, smart devices, game controller, anything that needs to meet like real time demands. So these are all considered embedded devices and when you're working with an Arduino, you are building an embedded device. So I'm just going to point out the main differences between like developing on a PC versus developing on an Arduino for people who have never done an Arduino development. So with like a PC, the file system, there is a file system, there's an OS like Mac OS or Linux or Windows. Um, there's like gigabytes of RAM, so you have a good amount of RAM. And you can program it in like Python, Java, and you have a keyboard and a monitor to view it for debugging and just general use. And it's really good for like fast calculations. Compared to like an Arduino that has no file system, no operating system, like really little RAM. We're talking about kilobytes. And so you can't even like buffer a small 140p, uh, 144p image essentially. So it's very little RAM, but it's enough to do a very specialized task that you give it. And it's mostly programmed in C and C++. Uh, don't worry if you haven't used these languages. They're not that difficult. They're very similar to Java uh, in a sense that they're like quite strongly typed. And uh, the key one important thing about an Arduino is that there's no monitor or keyboard to like debug with. So all the debugging has to be done like on your laptop uh, through some sort of communication between the device. And as mentioned before, the Arduino is very good for real-time applications. All right, so let's talk about the hardware that we can provide you during the hackathon. So we have three microcontrollers that we have a lot of. Um, the first one being Arduino Uno. So the Arduino Uno is great if you have a simple uh, application you want to make. Maybe this is the first time you're working with an Arduino or hardware. So it's a very easy place to start off with. And the Arduino Unos will be used to make uh, custom game controllers. This is a workshop that we'll be having tomorrow morning if you are interested in making your own custom game controller out of the hardware. And the Arduino Uno is perfect for that because it works with Unity. The second Arduino we have is Arduino Pro Micro. Uh, this is the smaller Arduino on the right hand, on the left hand side. And the thing that's special about this is it's small and also it, it can emulate a keyboard. So if you want to make macros or a different kind of game controller that doesn't work with Unity, just works in general for any game, then you might want to use the Arduino Pro Micro. And the last microcontroller is a little bit more complicated. It's called an ESP32. The ESP32 is Wi-Fi enabled. So you can connect it to Wi-Fi. I'm not too sure if you can connect to either room, but if you have a hotspot, you can definitely connect to that. So it's great for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi if you want to play around with those kind of connectivities. It is a little bit harder to develop. Um, so it, perhaps it's great for like, if you're a little bit more experienced with the Arduino Unos and the Arduino Pro Micro, and you want to try something a little bit more complicated with like a lot more functionality and more power, then you might want to go with the ESP. All right. Oh, this is a duplicate slide. So what can you make with this microcontroller that we'll be providing you? As mentioned before, you can make a game controller. We have various sensors for you to do that. We have like heart rate sensors, flex sensors, joysticks, various buttons, uh, ultrasonic sensors, a lot of fun stuff that you can make a really cool game controller out of. We, you can make a handheld electronic, like a smartwatch, like a smart wearable device. You can make like environment, environment monitoring. So if you're working on the game jam, the game jam or the maker con uh, challenges and you're making like the thing for the insect photography, you might want to use an Arduino to help with that or uh, something like that. We do have color sensors too if you want to use that for the accessibility challenge from MakerCon as well. So and if you have a Wi-Fi enabled ESP32, you can make an Internet of Things device. Basically, it's just a microcontroller connected to the internet. So if you think of like those uh, automatic outlets that you control with your phone or like uh, a smart thermostats, these are all IoT devices. There's a lot you can do with it and they're very fun to make. All right, so I know a lot of you guys have been waiting to figure out when to get free hardware. Now I'll be talking about it. As mentioned before, uh, 
after I go through a couple more slides, the table over there has a bunch of hardware. We have a couple mentors just organizing the table, and then they'll help you pick what you need. Um, they'll be giving you the microcontroller, a breadboard, uh, some wires. You can get more wires if you need later. But a button and an LED to get started with our very basic Hello World uh, application today to get you started if you haven't coded in Arduino before. So at the moment, uh, we're going to limit it to one microcontroller per team. Uh, and then afterwards in the morning, we'll be having like the rest of the hardware in our mentor lounge, which is uh, C407. So you can come to that room and grab basically whatever you want at that point, because uh, at that point, most teams should have gotten something. So you can get to like second rounds of hardware. And these sensors, you can get them after this workshop. For now, we'll just be focusing on some very basic buttons and LEDs for people who haven't uh, done Arduino before. And then you can try some of the other sensors on your own time. All right, so before we do hardware distribution, if you don't have the Arduino IDE, I would advise you to download it now just so that it can be downloading in the background while you collect your hardware. So the link, um, if you just go to arduino.cc forward slash en forward slash software, you should be able to download the Arduino IDE 2.0. They have a second version. We're going to be using that for our workshop. So with that said, make sure you're installing it. If you have any questions, you can come up to me and ask. And then I would like to, you guys to, I guess, try to make some sort of organized line for the hardware table. Um, yeah, so feel free to go get some hardware. Ming, can you uh, Ming, can you say something over the mic? Ming, can you say something over the mic? Test, 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 microphone, mic test, mic test. Hello, hello, test, 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 test. Mic test, mic test. Fitness grand pacer test is a full. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Um, Ming, uh, we're having some people ask if they can keep the hardware after. Yes, you can keep the hardware after the hackathon. It's free. <laughs> perfect, thank you. For those who missed it, we have a separate line for Arduino Unos. By the way, just a reminder, uh, for now it's just one microcontroller per team. And then afterwards in the morning, if you need more, then you can come to C407 to get extras. If you guys have any questions, like raise your hand or something, I can bring you the mic and then Mink can like address it to everyone as well.
So, what? Yeah, you go over there.
Oh, wait, but I can't. All right, so we're gonna get started with the hardware. Uh, so the overall, or no, don't switch yet, N not yet. Oh, oh, I have to. S Which one? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Anyways, that's fine. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, I'm, I'm assuming everyone's installed the uh, IDE and you have that up and running. Uh, the first thing we're gonna, I'm gonna open that. Oh, okay. We're gonna get a basic circuit set up, and then we're gonna program it. So, the, we're just gonna get basic LED to blink. If you notice your LEDs, there should be one leg that's longer than the other. Whoa. There should be one leg that's longer th than the other. So the shorter leg goes to ground, and then the longer leg goes to positive. So we're gonna plug in. If you if you're using Arduino Uno or some other Arduino. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This sh this should apply to all, but you can. Uh, if you've never used a breadboard before, basically everything that's in a row is connected with each other. So we're gonna plug in the LED kind of perpendicular to everything, and just rem remember which leg is a longer leg and wh which sort of slot it went into. If you need any help with setting up the circuit as we go, uh, you can sort of raise your hand, and one of the mentors will go and help you out. So. Uh, once you have the LED plugged in, on the shorter leg of the LED, that's going to go to the ground of your Arduino. And then plugging into the longer leg of the LED, uh, that can go to any pin, any numbered pin. We're gonna, I'm going to pick pin number eight. All right. So this is a oh this is a very basic LED setup, um, and we're just gonna get the LED to flash. So, 
Once you're done with the circuit, I'm going to switch over to the IDE, plug in your Arduino into the USB, and we'll get started with programming it. Here, our closer in. Oops. So um, if you're in the, oh, I didn't switch. Send to all. All right, there we go. My, you guys should be able to see my screen. Um, so when you're in the Arduino IDE, it might not look like this when you open it, but the main thing you want to do is you want to go to File, and you want to create a, a new sketch. And that should open up a new window with like a blank project. All right, so can I zoom in? All right, so you might see there's already some code generated. The first thing is the void setup. This is basically everything that you want to run once at the beginning of the uh, program. And then the void loop is like your main loop. So everything in the main loop will run forever, essentially. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're going to check that the laptop or your computer recognizes the Arduino. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go to Tools, and we're going to go to uh, Board, and we're going to look for the Arduino Uno or the Arduino Pro Micro if you have that. Um, for those who have the ESP32, the setup is slightly different. If you go to the Discord and in, in Hacker Resources, uh, there's a Notion page with a bunch of sort of links to resources for hardware. And you're going to have to click that link to run through the steps to set up the ESP32 uh, to work with the Arduino IDE since it doesn't work right out the box. So uh, once you've selected Arduino Uno by going to Tools, Board, Arduino AVR Boards, and selecting Arduino Uno or Arduino uh, Pro Micro, or it might show up as Arduino Micro. If you go to Ports, you should see there's something that pops up. And it might not be called Arduino, it might be called Arduino. Um, but you're going to want to click on it, and if you don't see anything, then the computer doesn't recognize the Arduino, and you might have to install a driver. The driver that you need to install is called, uh, is called the CH430, and oh, driver. So yeah, if your laptop isn't recognizing the Arduino, um, you can go search up CH340 driver and look for the SparkFun link. And that link should have the installation for the driver. Because not all computers will recognize the Arduino. So um, I'm going to let you guys get that set up, um, give you a few minutes. If you have any issues, raise your hands and I'll come over and help.
All right, so it looks like every, most people have at least like the computer recognizing the Arduino Uno or the Arduino. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get the LED to blink. So to do that, uh, Arduino provides a bunch of like very basic libraries and functions that you can use to do like basic electrical things. So the first thing we're gonna do is, or the first function we're gonna use is called pin mode. And what this does is basically, it tells the Arduino what pins are being used for what. So uh, the first argument is the pin. Um, I'm using pin number eight, but you might be using a different pin. And the second argument is mode. So like, is this an input device or an output device? In our case, it's an output device, so we'll use all, we'll type output in all caps. And since this is programmed in C, slash C++, uh, semicolons are required. Oops, okay. By the way, if you wanna save it, it might open up and ask you to save it in some folder. Uh, yeah, do do that, or else it won't save. So I'm just gonna call this Blinky. All right, so the next line we're gonna add to our code is uh, the function called digital write. So what digital write it does is it can turn on or off a pin, and, and we're gonna use it to turn on and off the LED. So the arguments it needs is the pin that the LED is connected to, in our case it's pin number eight, and then uh, we'll set the LED to on, so we'll set it to high. And once you have these two lines in the void set up, you can press uh, verify to compile it just to make sure that there's no errors. And once it's done compiling, we can upload it. And you should see your LED just stay on. So let me know if you don't see that and then we'll have people come, come around to help. But unless I want to put my monitor in the frame. Oh, we can? Yeah, let's Oh, yeah, that's good. You want to keep that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep that for that. Yeah. Or can you invert it? Because I think it's better if they see the code here and then they can view the line. Yeah, like, re reversing. Yeah. Is that the. Yeah? Oh. All right, so I don't see anyone with their hands raised up, so I'm assuming you guys got the LED to turn on. Um, by the way, we've modified sort of our workshop setup. Uh, if you notice, the projectors have like the physical Arduino in camera, and then the monitors on the tables will have the ID set up there. So at the moment, the LED doesn't really blink, so we can make that blink. Um, we're gonna move the digital write that we have into the void loop so that it runs forever. And we're gonna add, we're gonna use a function called delay, and it takes milliseconds. So what delay does is basically it's like Python time.sleep. It'll sort of make this, make the microcontroller idle and pause for a certain amount of time. And the amount of time is specified in milliseconds. So after the delay, uh, you can copy and paste the two lines we have and we're gonna replace the second digital write that says high with low. So in this case, it'll set it on for a second and then turn it off in a second, and that should blink the LED. So you can verify the sketch and upload it, and your LED should blink. If it's not blinking, um, raise your hand and we can come help.
All right, so I don't see any hands raised. We're going to continue with the next thing we're going to do for our basic Hello World. So right now, the LED blinks. That's cool. Um, it doesn't really tell you any information about what the Arduino is actually doing. So we're going to change that by having the Arduino send us a message from it, from the Arduino itself to our laptop, or we can see it on our screens. So this would be really useful for like debugging your applications or just providing some user uh, like interface for your Arduino, if you want. So we're going to be using something called Serial, which is just like a protocol. And to start that off, we're just going to type serial.begin. Uh, and that should take a uh, argument that's called the baud rate. And the baud rate is like a kind of an arbitrary number for the sake of the uh, workshop, we're just going to set it to 9600. This is just, just the speed at which the Arduino talks over serial. So that line should go into this the void setup, because we only want to set up the serial once. The next thing we're going to do is, in the void loop, anywhere in the void loop, I guess, it doesn't really matter where, we're going to use the function serial dot print ln. So that means print line. And you can pass a string through it. Uh, so we're just going to pass like hello world. Or actually, no, we're going to do hack the hill. <laughs> so once you have that line in the loop, uh, you can upload it and you won't see anything pop up immediately. What you have to do is, on the IDE, if you look on your top right, there's like this magnifying glass. And when you hover it over it, it says Serial Monitor. If you click it, you should get a console. And you should see the messages appear in this console. So uh, I'm going to show the code so that it's on the screen if you need to copy it. Uh, raise your hand if you have any issues, and we can come help. Pretty sure some people are already on it. Um, but I, I can text anyone from Green Place. <laughs> yeah.
It's called hard hardware resources. All right, so it looks like everyone seems to have it working. There's no hands up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a button so that we have some sort of like, you know, user input to our device. So to attach the button, if you look at, I guess, the projectors to see what the hardware is doing, um, the button has four legs. The four legs uh, are on each side, and they should kind of just go on each side of the breadboard like this. So you should have the button like this. The legs are on both sides. And so basically how the button works is it's just like a switch. It uh, opens the circuit and closes the circuit when you press it. So if you look at where the sort of like the, the, the pins for the button are, we're going to attach two wires to each side. And we're going to plug one of the wires. So uh, a button doesn't have polarity, so it's not like the LED where one of the wires has to go to ground or else the LED will like uh, break or something. The button doesn't have polarity, so you can kind of plug either wire. Uh, one of them is going to go to 5 volts. 5 volts or 3.3 .3 volts, depending on the Arduino you're using. And the other wire that isn't connected to 3.3 .3 or 5 volts We'll, we'll go to another numbered pin. I'm going to choose pin number seven. So uh, raise your hand if you have issues with connecting up the button circuit. Um, if you'd like, you can also come up and take a look if that's easier than looking at the projector. Uh, so, uh, something not related to our demo right now. A few of you guys have asked about just like what kind of sensors we have and like um, in general resources for the hardware. So, one thing that was posted in the Discord. Uh, is a Notion page called Hacker Info. So, if you go to this uh, Notion page and you scroll down to hardware resources, and you go to hardware guide, you'll see a bunch of like uh, resources, links to uh, articles and how-tos to get you started when you pick out a sensor that you want to know more about. And it also has information for setting up the ESP32 board if you're trying to get that set up as well. Uh, the link is in the announcements of the Discord. You might... Uh, yeah, it's a Notion link, so it's somewhere there. Sorry? You might have to scroll up. <laughs> really? No way. Uh, announcements, right? I, I will chat.
All right, so I'm going to assume everyone has their button connected to the Arduino. We're going to get started on coding it. Uh, if you haven't had it set up, raise your hand and we'll help. <laughs> All right, so programming the button is very similar to programming the uh, LED in the sense that we're going to use pin mode again. So you can copy that again, and this time we're going to specify the pin that the button's connected to. So in my case, it's pin 7. It might be different for yours. And this time, it's an input device. So we're going to change output to input. Oh. Yo, Stefan. Went to sleep? All right. Uh, yeah, the screens are just booting up again. I don't know why they turned off, but they'll be back shortly. Yo, why did they put it so far away? It'd be nice if it was like full out. I'm sorry. All right. So the next line we're gonna uh, have is. We're gonna have, uh, uh, yeah. We're gonna have an if statement inside the code. Um, we're actually gonna delete all of the delays and the digital write stuff because that can be in the way of our button, since the delays are blocking. So we're just gonna do if, and we're gonna use a function called digital read. So similar to digital write, um, but this time it's reading from the pin instead of writing to it. And for digital write, or digital, oh, digital read. Uh, for digital read, it requires basically what pin are we reading. In this case, it's the LED pin, and that's pin 7 for me, but it might be different for yours. And what this function returns is either high or low. So we're going to set it to high. And Inside of the if, we're going to have it prints a message that says the button has, in, has been clicked or something. So we can copy over the serial print and just like give it a different string, something like button has been pressed. And you can try uploading this and hopefully you should see it when you open the serial monitor. When you click the button, it should uh, print out a message. Any other internal pull down resistor. All right. Um, so if you run it, you, it actually doesn't work. The reason for that is because we forgot the pull down resistor. Um, that's kind of needed sometimes for buttons. So I'm just going to pull out the circuit because uh, I'm tired. <laughs> All right, so you actually do need a resistor. We do have resistors in the hardware section of, of uh, like the hardware table where you got your microcontrollers. So just grab any resistor. It really doesn't matter what value, like 220 ohms or 2.7K, anything around that is fine. doesn't really matter what resistor. So yeah, um, if you want to follow along with a button, I would advise you to go get a resistor because we got to modify the circuit.
All right, so to modify your circuit, um, basically what you need is a resistor that goes to, oh, move, oh yes, I see. You need a resistor that's going to uh, five volts that goes into one of the legs of the button. So you might need a, a few more wires to connect that if, if you need. Um, I'm just gonna reuse the buttons I used for the LED since we're not using the LED anymore for now. And yeah, so make sure that uh, you have the resistor go to the, can I zoom in? Oh, that's cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! I broke it. What? There we go. All right. No, Justine is over there, in the purple. Yeah. So, you just need a resistor going from one of the pins of the button and to another jumper that can go to five volts or three point three volts. Either of them work for Arduino. Oh, yeah, I have to zoom out. So yeah, uh, just to recap, let me zoom in. You need one of the uh, resistor to connect one of the pins of the button to a jumper, and that jumper cable can go to five volts of the Arduino. If you need help, uh, raise your hand. We can come around and help because. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing now because we're getting resistors and multiple uh, components in the circuit. Um, so it's okay if you're a little bit lost of what's going on. All right, so once you have that resistor in, um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect a jumper cable. We're gonna connect another jumper cable to where the resistor is connected and that is gonna go to one of your numbered pins. So I'm gonna pick pin seven like I had before. So let me zoom out. So uh, the last thing that needs to be connected is on the other pin of the button that doesn't have anything connected right now, we're gonna connect a wire that goes to ground. So uh, raise your hand if you're having issues with setting this up. I know it's a little bit more complicated, it's kind of messy and hard to see, but um, yeah. If you wanna also come up and take a look at the physical one, it might be easier than the projector. I want to take a photo. It's like it's easier yeah, to see. <laughs> oh yeah, feel free to come up and take a look if it's hard to see from the projector. All right, but if you have that set up, we're gonna go back to the Arduino IDE. Um, And you can test the code again. Um, I'm just gonna try to get it working first. All right, so one modification you have to make to the code is that instead of digital read equals to high, it has to be low since we have a pull up resistor connected in the circuit. 
And you can disable the thing, like only have it print, put in pressed and sort of comment out any other print statements because it might sort of clutter the serial monitor. Um, but once you have that, you should be able to open up your serial terminal or serial monitor. And when you press the button, oh, wait, wait. one sec. You, sh you should see that every time you click the button and sort of release, it'll print something. Or when you hold it down, it'll print. Uh, by the way, you can raise your hand and if you need any help, as always.
All right, we'll resume with the workshop in like a minute or two. Uh, raise your hand if you need any help. All right, so this concludes our demo for like all the code we're gonna write for this workshop. Um, I just have a few slides to go through when it comes to like sensors and what you could build with the sensors. Because now that you have your basic Arduino working, um, you guys can add more stuff to it and figure out what you need for your project in terms of sensors. So, oh, this uh, slideshow. All right. All right, so here are a few sensors that we have available. Um, we have color sensors. Those are basic color sensors. Like they can detect what kind of color um, is in front of them. Ultrasonic sensors, these tell distances. They kind of look like Wally -E eyes or like robot eyes. Um, we have joysticks, just like basic game controller joysticks if you want to add that to your project. We have a bunch of those. We have LCD screens. So if you want to have a display, displays are oftentimes a little bit harder to work with because um, programming them is a little bit more complicated, but they are very fun to work with. You can get a nice GUI going, but you might need an ESP32 for that. 
we have heart rate sensors as well. So like the same kind of heart rate sensors you might find on your phone where you put your finger up to it and it shines a light and figures out like blood oxygen, heart rate, all the cool kind of stuff you can do with heart rate sensors. We have PIR sensors. These are like the sensors on motion cameras or garage door lights that kind of light up or react whenever it has a presence of something that emits infrared to like a living animal or human or something that moves. We have a microphone. Um, if you want to do very basic noise detection or anything like that, we have a few microphones you can use. Uh, we have servos. These are motors. So if you want to make a very small demo of a motorized something, we have servos um, that are very precise. We have buttons as well, as you've used before. And we have some flex sensors. So flex sensors are basically kind of like uh, flexible sensors that can tell how much they're flexed. You can use these for gloves or any other sort of like fun, maybe game controller or just controller in general. So this is not everything that we have. I do want to bring your attention to something posted in announcements. And that's the hacker resources for the hardware. So there is a Notion link somewhere in announcements. You might have to scroll up. I'll pin this to announcements after this uh, workshop. And the Notion will take you to this page. If you scroll down, here is all of the challenges mentioned in opening ceremonies. If you need them written out, if you want to take a deeper look at them. We have like project submissions, um, hacker resources and whatnot. So if you go to hardware resources, it'll bring you down to the location where there's a link to a page called hardware guide. This is basically uh, covers almost everything we have in terms of sensors and like their ESP32s and some basic um, like links and code to get you started. So you can take a look at this page, and if you have a sensor that you see from here that you want to use, uh, we're going to be doing sensor distribution, I guess, now, later, like, like, yeah, just after I finish the slides. And afterwards, we're going to move to C407, the mentor lounge. And uh, if you have any questions or you need some hardware, come up and grab something that you need. Uh, or if you need extra wires or something like that, you can get them there as well. So C407. So yeah, take a look at this. and. Uh, this might come really handy when it comes to what you want to make for, for, for your uh, project. So I think I have like two more slides and then we can do sensor distribution. Okay, yeah, so before we end off, just some general advice for using sensors and hardware in general. If it's not working, here's a, like, you should check if it's plugged in first of all. I know it sounds kind of dumb, but like, you'd be surprised how many times you forget to plug in a wire. Uh, check the data sheet. Oftentimes, like, the answer is there. You know, wh why read? You, it takes five minutes to read documentation. It could save you five hours of debugging. Check your connection. Sometimes you might have loose wires or wires might fall out by accident because the connectors aren't the strongest. Use libraries. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to code things from scratch, so I advise you to use Arduino libraries that you can find online. Open source ones work great. And when working with sensors, you might find that there's various communication methods. Some things that are more complicated, like I2C, SPI, UART. So you might need to take some time to learn about these communication protocols, but they're very handy because most sensors use one of the three. So yeah, that's the last slide. Thanks for coming to the uh, workshop. If you need hardware, the mentors will be, I guess, in the back. For now, only take what you need. Um, Please don't try to hoard any sensors. We just want to make sure there's enough for everyone. So for now, take one or two sensors at most. Tomorrow morning, if you need more, come to the Mentor Lounge. We'll be happy to give you whatever else you need. Thanks.